Hello everyone and welcome back! In the next couple of lessons we are going to introduce a new Angular Universal concept. We are going to talk about the Angular Universal State Transfer API. The State Transfer API is an Angular Universal feature that allows us to transfer some state between the server-side application and the client-side application. You are probably wondering why would we even want to do that in the first place. So the best way to understand the State Transfer API is to understand the problem that it's trying to solve and that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. In order to better understand why do we need a State Transfer API, let's start by running our sample application in development mode by running the Angular Universal development server. We can do so as usual using the command npm run dev ssr and after a moment we should see here the Angular Universal server up and running. Let's now switch to a larger window and have a look at the running application. So I'm going to open here the network tab and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to filter here on Ajax requests. Now starting here from the home page containing the list of courses, let's click here on view course. Now notice the following, whenever we get to this page, we are going to do here two Ajax requests. One in order to fetch the course object from our backend, containing the information about the title of the course and the thumbnail. And we are also going to do a second separate HTTP request to fetch the lessons data. So this second request is going to fetch the data displayed here on the lessons table, while the first request contains the course object that contains here the course thumbnail, the title, etc. Now let's remember that this is an Angular Universal application, so a part of the page here is being server-side rendered whenever we reload here the application at this specific URL. So if we go ahead here and we hit refresh, we are going to reload the page. The page is going to get server-side rendered. We saw there the loading indicator of our application shell. And we also saw that this text here was immediately displayed on the screen and that the image was displayed shortly after while the lessons data was still getting loaded from our backend. We can see here the HTTP request that loaded the course data and we can see here the lessons data. And in order to see only these two requests here on the screen, we can quickly filter here by the keyword Firebase and we're going to get here only the two requests that our application is making. The other Ajax requests that you saw here on this list before filtering were related to the hot reload mechanism of the Angular CLI development server so we want to make sure that we ignore those requests because they are not actually being made by our application and because they will not be present in production. Now at this point you might start realizing already that something strange is going on here. Our application here is being server-side rendered. So if we inspect here the original HTML payload that we received from the server using view page source, we are going to be able to find here the title and the thumbnail of the course. We are going to see it here further down the page if we search by the title. We can see here Angular Universal in depth and we have here the course thumbnail. So the course title and thumbnail that we see here on top of our course page were already server-side rendered and delivered on the original HTML payload that we received from the server. That's why they show up here on the screen a bit faster than the lessons list, whose data still needs to be fetched from the backend. In order for the server-side application to be able to display the course title and the thumbnail, the server-side application needed to do a backend request to our database identical to this request here in order to fetch this information and in order to be able to include it on the original HTML payload that we received. Then that original payload arrived here at the browser and what happened after? Well, the first thing that happened is that we managed to see some content here very quickly on the screen, containing here the top menu, the course title and thumbnail, because it was included on the original HTML payload. Meanwhile, in the background, 
the script tags of the application loaded Angular here onto our page, the Angular framework kicked in and took control of the whole page. And when that happened, our course component that corresponds to this page was instantiated and that component made a couple of requests to the backend. It made a request to fetch the course data and it made a second request to fetch the lessons data. But as you can see, there is a problem here. This request here to fetch the course data is unnecessary. We only need to make this request here in order to display the course title and thumbnail to the user. But the title and the thumbnail was already included on the original HTML payload that we got from the server. So ideally, whenever this application starts up on this page, there is no need to call the server a second time to fetch again the course data because we already have all the data that we need on the original HTML payload. This second request here is unnecessary. It's a duplicate request because our server side application just made an identical request on our backend. The client side application will, when it starts up, end up accidentally doing a second duplicate HTTP request to fetch the exact same data that was just fetched a moment ago on the backend, just in order to display it again on the screen. But there is no need to do this duplicate request. This request is unnecessary and ideally it should not be done. For larger applications with more complex screens, the presence of these duplicate HTTP requests might even create here some unwanted flickering effects on the page where you can see clearly the content of the page initially as it was rendered out of the initial HTML payload and then the content is removed while a request is being done to the backend and it's shown again to the user. So that type of unnecessary flickering effect on the application caused by unnecessary requests that are repeated to the backend is something that we want to avoid for user experience. We would also want to avoid the duplicate request for performance reasons. There is no need to do the same request twice. So how can we solve this problem? Ideally, what we want to do is to fetch the data only once at the backend while we are preparing the original HTML payload. Then we need to find some way of transferring that data that was already fetched on the server onto the client without needing to do another request to the database. So we need a mechanism for transferring state, such as for example this course object, from the server side application into the client side application. And that's where the Angular Universal State Transfer API comes in. Let's then, on the next couple of lessons, learn about the State Transfer API. We're going to be using it to remove this duplicate unnecessary HTTP request from the course screen.